Welcome back, everyone, to Leader Lessons Now. Today's topic is, what is an ideal worker? Quote, with most of us working from home these days, Americans' workday has increased by 40% or about three hours a day. End quote. This is from the Harvard Business Review article titled, The Pandemic Has Exposed the Fallacy of the Ideal Worker. That was published on May 11th, 20. So it does feel that way, uh, which is that... Many of us are working from home and uh, trying to find the work-life balance and new routines, and it does feel like we're working more uh, because it seems like we're always on call. You need to respond immediately to all requests he has or your supervisor has. But, you know, being this sort of out of sight uh, from your supervisor, they're, they're not seeing that. You know, not only are you doing your own job, but uh, you're taking care of your children and maybe the work that a child care worker was doing or and or as a school teacher. So you're trying to balance all of that. And uh, the executives can fear that they have lost productivity of their team because that team is out of sight. And for them, that means that it's out of their control. And most uh, immature leaders would would really be uncomfortable with that because if I can't see my team, I can't control my team, then am I am I really a leader? And are we going to be able to get the same results that we've always um, achieved in the old style of the ideal worker? So how does the leader need to adapt their view of an ideal worker and how do employees need to define themselves differently as equal to or more than um, the value they had pre-COVID? First, let's put into context where we are in Western society, and that is that when you go to school, the goal is to prepare you for a job. So you're being exposed to disciplines, you're trying to figure out which one works for you, what you like, and then upon graduation, it's highly suggested that you figure out how to get a college degree and begin to specialize even more and then possibly a graduate degree for ultimate specialization towards getting a job. So the job is about working and uh, showing up every day and contributing to an institution that should be uh, contributing back to the overall society. So it's the idea that you have meaning in the work you do because it supports us collectively. Interestingly, on HBR, there was a survey they cited, which was that uh, there are 14% of women that are considering quitting their job now, remote working, and 11% of men also quitting. When you dive into the data of that survey, what you find is that the key divide is not as much men versus women, but rather parent versus non-parent. Now, this is interesting. So... The parent is being overwhelmed remote working, and the non-parent is uh, is increasing productivity in the style that they've always had. So, uh, and what I mean is that they're just working longer, working harder, sending more Slack messages, email messages. Maybe maybe they are out and about visiting, you know, their other employees or something. But but there isn't like there's more like a oh I've got more time to work more for the non-parent, whereas the parent has sort of diversity and responsibilities that they have to balance in really complicated ways, which is I've got a Slack coming, a Slack message coming in I need to tackle, I need to do some research, get a PowerPoint together, I need to get lunch, uh, lunch prepared, at some point I'm going to need to clean up some mess or something, I'm going to take care of outside, something's going on at the house, and, and I wonder if the ideal worker is best represented as the non-parent. It's the one that's sort of self-centered naturally and has a focus on just uh, contributing to the company by keeping themselves tied to who they are as a representative of the output of their work in volume, right? But the parent has really a different contribution, which is one of decision-making, right? And that decision-making isn't necessarily about contributing a whole bunch of decisions and volume of decision, but rather the complexity of balancing pros and cons in which the day is presenting obstacles to that are not only from work, but also, also now from home. If we speed up five years, which of those two is the ideal worker? The one that just did more of the same or the one that was 
presented new challenges and decision-making processes, I'm going to have to pick the latter, which is the parent. So I think, I think that may be a place to focus in on leaders, which is for your team members that, have par- that are parents, their, resp- their value, the new I- definition of ideal worker, is that they have family responsibilities that they're now balancing in real time, not, li- not like after work hours, but in real time. And, and that is giving them a new challenge that's going to make them the new ideal worker for the future. I'll digress a little bit into the article and to some areas that I disagreed with, which was kind of interesting. Uh, they, they got into this conversation about, you know, this is a time where we really want to make sure you're engaging employees because engaged employees uh, increases profitability. That, that didn't really have any application to this article in terms of ideal worker for me. So, um, so I sort of moved off of that. The next was supervisors have figured out how to supervise people without physically breathing down their necks. Um, yes, that's true physically, but digitally, I would say that it's exponentially more. In fact, I would rather have them breathing down my neck versus um, the number of channels that are being abused in communication. So yeah, I, I don't think that's a pro there. Remote work also makes people more engaged and satisfied and less likely to quit. And this was a quote again from the article, and it had a link to cite the 2014 article um, around how remote workers uh, increases job satisfaction. So, I mean, 2014 is pretty dated um, at this point, so I'm not sure that that's a proper reference to apply into today's um, situation. And then this idea that remote working is making people more engaged and satisfied. I, I would say right now they're they're probably more engaged because they're being asked to more, like, like we talked about, which is this additional three hours a day and trying to juggle all of these responsibilities. But I don't know that they're less likely to quit. Uh, it feels like they, they can't quit. So they're trying to figure out how to adapt, but uh, it's a new it's a new challenge of complexity in how you structure your day. So uh, I think there is a way to think about how you jump this divide from the traditional ideal worker in the office and how that was sort of separated from from home life to now the integration of work and uh, physically. And I, I think a, a good suggestion is to. Think about the interactions that you're getting digitally, email, uh, voicemail, Zoom, all of this, uh, Slack, text, how you use that unstructured interaction and how you balance that with the quiet time to actually do the work. And I wonder if we just need to start using some language around, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply two hours of uh, work today towards that project, or, or three hours are dedicated to this, like something that maybe can help your leader, who is probably dated, uh, help them understand that you are as, if not more productive, and help to quantify the work that they don't see that you need to engage with necessary to deliver uh, what they're asking from you. And then, it, and then, unfortunately, the article ended really poorly, which was never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think the point was, like, use this opportunity to try to redefine the ideal worker. I don't know. I think, obviously, at some point, you know, offices come back, but... I don't think it'll be the office of the past. I think it'll be the, you know, the open concept office again. And interestingly, you know, folks that are still trying to play catch up, it seems to me like Silicon Valley has already gone back to uh, wanting to either remote, uh, remote work from home exclusively, or at least have some sort of privacy versus these open floor plans. But I, I could see where a company might sort of quantify reduced expenses by having an open floor plan because you can basically cram more people into the same amount of space without the overhead or expense for walls and doors and that kind of thing. So I don't know. I, uh, I think I think the, the meat of this is that the, the parent and the non-parent is a great place to focus for the leader and really try to to really try to understand the point of view of the parent that is working from home and and understand what they need because I think they're going to come out of this much more valuable or in, in this case, they're going to be the definition of the new ideal worker because they will have endured some change that they had to adapt to 
that the non-parent did not have to adapt to. So those are my thoughts. Uh, again, I thanks for your attention and time and focus. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thumbs up or thumbs down would be great. Uh, I'll put a question in the comments on what you think the ideal worker is uh, in 2020. Thanks.